Hello everyone! Today it's time for a little post-processing session here and I'll be talking about masks and selection in Photoshop. In this part one video I'll be showing how I create some hard edge masks, then the typical luminosity masks which many of you might already know and then also some more advanced more targeted luminosity masks. And after showing how I create those masks there will be another part, a uh, part two tutorial where I show how to use them, how I combine them. So let's not waste much more time and get into it. So one use case I run into quite frequently is that I want to have a selection of the sky because I want to make some contrast adjustments <clears throat> which only affect the sky. So what I usually do is <clears throat> I grab the magic wand tool and I will now click here close to an edge into the sky and for this here this already selects quite a huge area. What's important is here having a tolerance not too high, having contiguous active and also this anti-aliasing which I think makes the selection a little smoother. Um, then if you hold down shift you can add to this selection. So for example holding down shift and clicking in this area this will extend the selection and for this case it extends it already to this area. Now I can click again holding down shift and again we get more of the selection. Down here I add a little bit more shift and let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah this is already quite a decent selection of the sky. So the next step is now to refine this selection because it's not perfect especially in those areas here where I have the scaffolding. So what I can now do is go to select and do refine edge and what I usually do I go to this overlay mode which shows me the part which is not selected in red so I can have a very close look at the edge here. So let's just look at this. One thing which often works is to use a smart, smart radius and yeah, go to some value less than one pixel. This already will refine the selection a bit. The next step you can do is use this refine radius tool and with this tool using an opacity of like 100% you can draw along the edges here and then Photoshop will use an algorithm to determine which parts should be selected and which shouldn't and this works quite well for the scaffolding here. So I just go along those edges and try to improve the selection a bit. I can do this down here and also for parts where I have trees where this very hard selection which I now have will look yeah, very strange if I apply some uh, settings or some adjustments later. So I will just go along those edges here and you see how the selection gets better. It's, it gets some yeah, half transparent areas in between those leaves and the edge is less hard after I apply, I apply this. It doesn't often work like this but you can always try to improve the selection this way. So I would go around the image now and I do this for the other areas but yeah I will spare you the time here. I'll just go like in this area because it didn't work so well. Okay so let's say we're done here. I can now press OK and what I would then do I would save this selection. So I go to channels and press down here to create a new alpha channel. And now if we look at this channel, let's press Ctrl D to deselect. 
this channel represents the selection we now made. So you also see here the scaffolding, how nicely it is selected. And yeah, that's the first selection you can use. But you have to do so very conservatively because of the hard edges. You can easily get artifacts. But I will show some use cases in part two of this tutorial. Another set of selections I frequently use are made out of luminosity masks. Those are quite common nowadays, but I still want to quickly show you how to create them. So first of all, you go to the channels palette and if you just control click on the RGB channel, you get the very basic luminosity mask. If I just click down here on create alpha channel, we can look at this and you see this channel now represents the luminosity values in the picture. And using such a luminosity mask as selection, so basically just clicking, control click on this alpha channel, will give you a selection that you can use very nicely to work on contrasts or do other adjustments without getting halos. But as with the other selection, use cases will have to wait until part two. So I now first show you how to create more luminosity masks. So from this basic mask, which I would just call lights, I click on it, control click on it, and now I can intersect this selection with itself, which makes it even smaller. So I control, alt, shift click, on the lights again and you see this little X here. And this creates an intersection of those luminosity masks and now if I create another channel which I can call lights 2 or something like that, you see that's already a much smaller selection. So you have to know the bright parts are basically what will be selected if I control click and the darker parts will be less selected and the black parts will be not selected at all. And if I repeat this step, control clicking, doing the intersection, control shift alt click, I get an even smaller selection and so on. So this is one way to create those masks. There are more ways and you can play around with it. For example, you could create a mask by just clicking on the lights here and intersecting it with a so clicking on the lights too sorry and intersecting it with the lights then creating an alpha channel and you see this looks a little different it selects a bit more so many ways to do so to create a set of light masks besides those lights you can also create those luminosity selections for the dark areas and you do so by again clicking on the RGB channel which selects the bright tones and now control shift I inverting this selection and now if you create a channel you see it's basically the opposite to the lights and I can call it darks and also let's just add the names to those Lights 3, Lights 2.5, so just so we know what those are, it's always good to have them named. So, But now let's continue with those darks, so control clicking and control alt shift clicking again intersects the darks and same as with the lights. I get an even smaller selection. And I can do this again. And yeah, now I have again a set of luminosity masks, but this time for the dark values. And yeah, you can continue, combine it, same as I did for the lights. And what I want to show you 
the last set of masks is for the midtones and the midtones you can get by subtracting the lights and darks masks from a selection for the whole image so you press ctrl a this selects the whole image and now i can ctrl alt click on the lights which subtracts the lights from this total selection and now i can ctrl alt click on the darks and this subtracts the darks you can ignore this warning here and now if i create a new channel and we look at this it's mostly gray because this will only select the midtones <clears throat> and only a very small part of the midtones so with this selection you actually just slightly select areas in the image and you preserve the dark tones and the light tones if you do adjustments and same as for this let's call this midtones you can create other midtones so again let's just control a select everything then control alt click on lights 2 to subtract them and now control alt on darks 2 to subtract them and what we get we get the midtones 2 yeah and there's no fixed recipe here you can combine it just as you need it so you could subtract the lights from this uh, alt uh, of this total selection and the dark three if you want so so combine it as you want or as you need but yeah this is the basics of creating luminosity masks so this was quite easy and basic and with those masks you already have very options when processing the image but I want to show you a little more advanced way a little yeah, variation of the luminosity masks so you can create a completely new set or a very targeted set of luminosity masks if you do some adjustments to the image first for example let's say well let's let's look here at the lights again Currently, this is the basic selection and the very bright areas are what's selected and this is mostly here in the city. But let's say I want to try to create such a luminosity mask which mostly selects the sky. What I can do, I create a black and white layer here and I do an adjustment. So I darken the warm areas, so basically the city and I brighten. The blue areas the blue tones which are mostly in the sky i don't go too much because i want to avoid too harsh contrasts and now that i have this selection i can further well this image i can further add a curves layer and then just using here this hand i can click on an area here at the vatican and now click on the sky and brighten it so further increasing the contrast and I could even add more adjustment layers but let's just stop here and now we go to the channels and do a control click on the RGB which basically again creates a luminosity mask but if we now create this and let's just pull it up a bit if we now compare it with the basic lights we did, you see this completely different. So this here is also a luminosity mask, but this luminosity mask will target mostly the sky and less of the city, while the default luminosity mask will target mostly the bright areas within the city and less of the sky. So you see there's a lot more to luminosity masks than simply starting with the base image and creating the luminosity masks. By first applying some adjustments to the image and trying to yeah, target specific areas of the image, you can create very targeted luminosity masks. So there's yeah, no limit here. You can 
just add further adjustment layers and you try to get a very good separation for the area you want to be selected later and then just start with luminosity masks. So you now have seen three ways how I create masks for my post-processing and this also concludes part one of this little series about masking and selections. In part two I will show you how I use those selections and masks to creatively work on my image.